this is My Hero Analysis, a podcast about My Hero Academia, aka Boku no Hero Academia. We are three grown adults who mind Japanese children's cartoons for serotonin because God knows our brains aren't making it naturally. Hi, how is everybody doing today? I have nicotine cravings and PMS at the same time, so my brain is just soup that is on fire. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And what's your name? I thought I said it. Oh, maybe I didn't. My name's Fern. (laughs) Brain soup. Remember, brain soup. Also, never, never touch nicotine. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm Nicole, and I I also want to reiterate, don't touch nicotine. No cigarettes, no tobacco. You don't need it. Get the patch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even, honestly, the cravings will hit you out of nowhere, like, Mm -hmm. even, like, years and years after you've quit. And you just got to power through them for like weeks at a time. And mm-hmm. they can just, they can hit at any moment. Yep. Yep. And I, I'm proud of you for staying on the wagon. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's not. I have never smoked, but I grew up with smokers. So I know how terrible it is, but also I know how the health implications will turn out. So I'm yeah. doubly proud of you. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, drugs. Anyway, for me, (laughs) instead of battling nicotine urges, I have been battling seasonal affective disorder and it has been very, very difficult. Uh, But, Mm. but this past weekend, I actually like finished reading a book for like the first time in four months. So yeah, (laughs) I'm proud of you. Thank you. I also just woke up from an accidental nap. So (laughs) I'm a little discombobulated. That's where we are. Uh, Hey, y'all. Like Fern, I have also done the nicotines. I reiterate, don't do it. Mm -hmm. However, I am on Nicole's boat. Uh, I am also battling seasonal depression and it's not, it's winning, Um, but Mm -hmm. I'm okay. (laughs) I have been watching uh, the Beverly Hills Chihuahua movies. It's been great. I also I fell love- twice this week. <laughs> oh, what? Honey, you did not mention that earlier. Are you okay? <laughs> what happened? Um, my clumsiness is at an all time high this week, apparently. Um, I busted my oh, knee on Saturday, I think. Oh, God. Honey. And then I twisted my angle yesterday, but it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Is your ankle okay? That sounds yeah, it's fine. like it sucks. <laughs> it's fine. It's a little sore, but you know, eh. It's well, not definitely the first take time. it easy. And I'm glad you weren't more seriously injured. Yeah. Maria is going through it this week. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I've also had like two very, very intense days at work. So yeah. I, I'm working from home the rest of the rest of week and most of next week. And I'm heading to Chicago to visit Fern next weekend. So Yay. Yeah, you are me wo- going. <laughs> Yay. And Nicole is not coming to visit me and I'm very upset. I didn't even know next weekend was the plan. I need to get babysitters for all the animals that stare at me because I do not give them the wet food they want, even though it gives them allergic reactions. Uh, Well, (laughs) next time I'm going is in June. So okay, just putting that out there. Interesting. Yeah. A little My Hero reunion. Yeah. Yes. But um, yeah, no, it's been fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah that's where we're at that's where we're at um what are we doing okay this week <laughs> we are doing notes and notes. timeline and thinking oh I god procrastinated like a crazy person yeah it's fine we got there and that's that's the goal i know i finished <laughs> dear listeners i finished all of my notes this morning <laughs> when we were recording this this yeah, afternoon yeah and, and just so listeners know we try to do them like a couple days in advance so we can like give ourselves a little cushion but I think like all of us have just been struggling but we're here mm-hmm. we are ready we yeah. are excited let's go let's yeah let's do this 
So this week we're covering episode six of season two, The Boy Born With Everything. Good golly gosh, what a title. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which in the manga is chapters 31 and 32. So I'm going to lead us through a brief synopsis and then I'll hand it off to Nicole to discuss uh, law for discussion topics, manga differences (laughs) and Easter eggs. (laughs) We're going to discuss those discussion topics. Yes, we are. (laughs) Yes, yes, we will. So after the usual opener and credits, uh, we get our recap of the previous ep. Um, So Izuku inspired everyone during the um, cavalry battle. His team got fourth place. Yay. Uh, Then the kids get a break and Shoto drags Izuku to a private spot to have a capital T talk. Yeah. And I genuinely can't remember if there are going to be like pre-credit scenes in future episodes. Like, why is my brain like this? Me neither. I, and I've watched it multiple times and I still don't know. Yeah. It's like, we forget the format of all episodes once we have watched them once. And yep. my yep. brain is sad. <laughs> it's the ADHD. It is. <laughs> Yeah, I I genuinely couldn't tell you. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of people with no clue, uh, Shoto may only have one brain cell awake at any given time, but he does know that Izuku's quirk, quote unquote, feels like All Might's. And so he asks Izuku if he's All Might's secret love child. And like in the show, it's played off for laughs. But you know what? It's a, it's a reasonable assumption, like given the context. It is. It is reasonable, but also like the deadpan way it's delivered. It's just hilarious and wonderful. Um, And in the dub, I guess at some point, Shoto says he's overwhelmed by something. And I don't know what kind of place I was in when I did these (laughs) notes. But my my response to this note is that he is overwhelmed with feelings for Izuku, his sweet broccoli boy. And please, please, please stop me. Please stop. Please (laughs) I, I need to go away. And then my, <laughs> my very next note, my uh, uh, the next note is much more serious. And I made the realization that he may be immediately assuming the love child angle because all his life has actually been about breeding and eugenics and abusiveness. And I'm so sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 100% why. Yeah, yeah. My poor sweet summer child is working so hard with that one brain cell. Same. Um, But but the fact that he could like, you know, actually pick up how Izuku and AMs have similar properties is actually pretty incredible. Good job, Mm -hmm. baby boy. Also, Nicole, you added more fuel for my my eternal endeavor hate. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. I made the realization, so I had to share <laughs> the sadness with everyone. I I screamed when I read this note, by the mm, way. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, listeners, don't worry. The Endeavor hate is coming. Yes. So Shoto yes. believes that because he's Endeavor's kid and Izuku is all my protege, they are destined to be rivals. Yes. Um, And this is also the point where I realized Shoto is like a lot smarter than Endeavor is, at least in putting together these little clues. Because Endeavor like requires hours to solve a very simple cipher later on in the show. And so like Shoto must have gotten his brains from his mom's side of the family. Poor son. Oh yeah, she's significantly more intelligent than Endeavor is. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And it's kind of a shame that we don't get to see that till like much later. Yeah, much later. Oh, I can't wait though. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Shoto kind of views Izuku as an extension of All Might, just kind of mm-hmm. like he views himself as an extension of Endeavor because poor boy is only just now trying to figure out who he is as his own person. But (laughs) there was so much beaten into him that it kind of makes it difficult to separate the two. So he thinks Izuku is pretty much on the same boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfectly put. So while that's happening, All Might and Endeavor are off somewhere else. And Endeavor, or um, All Might tries to approach Endeavor and have like a little chat with him. And Endeavor blows All Might off, but he's persistent because... I do think All Might's aware of his own failings as a teacher, and he theorizes that because Shoto's doing so well in the competition, then Endeavor must be doing something right, so he wants advice. 
But then Endeavor just swan dives off the deep end and he's all, my creation will surpass yours. And All Might is like, bro, what the actual fuck? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I was not expecting that. What was that? Yeah, yeah. He's just shocked in the stairwell. And my my thought was these two are like numbers one and two in their field. And this field Mm -hmm. like requires a lot of networking, a lot of talking. So how hell have they not even spoken to each other in like a decade like it it it, it did not comp it did not compute um but like also also toshi honey you did you did a backflip down the stairs to get endeavor's attention again like your gymnastics (laughs) please stop also endeavor like shoulder checked him as he was having his little meltdown. So, but how did All Might's suit not catch on fire? I have so many questions. <laughs> so much happening. And this was only like a 20 second scene, but- it, Oh yeah. Uh, uh, oh it, yeah. It was hard. <laughs> yeah. So Nicole, for your statement, I, I All Might has been out of the country for most of the past couple of years and has been the most quote unquote reliable hero. So he's probably constantly like been on call. Also, given Endeavor's personality, you know that man would never want to be close to the person that makes him feel inferior. Mm-hmm. He, I bet yes. that's all Endeavor's fault. He just mm-hmm. straight up refuses to talk to All Might, like, period. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. oh, yeah, like, for sure. But also, how do you avoid each other for 10 years when, when you're in the most, like, speculated about industry in your country? I just, I just logically. If you're petty enough, you can make it happen. Oh, yeah, you can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> And you know Endeavor is petty as fuck. Yeah, but not in a fun yeah. way. No. <laughs> as per my next thing, he doesn't refer to Shoto as his son, but as things like that, quote unquote, that. Fuck, I cannot stand this man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, it's so sweet that All Might is trying to figure out how to raise the future the generation, though. That made me a little happy. Oh, <laughs> the one little, so little sweet point in all of this fucking interaction. Yeah. Yep, totally. So then we jump back to Shoto and Izuku, and it's Shoto backstory time. So basically, before he was born, his dad got pissed enough about never being number one that he arranged a quirk marriage with Shoto's mom in order to breed a powerful offspring because she's got an ice quirk. So Endeavor abused both his wife and then all of his kids until his mom suffered a complete mental mental breakdown in which she burned her kid's face and then got shipped off to a hospital. And Shoto hasn't talked to her since. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the whole buying off of her entire family, the (sighs) trial and error when it comes to your literal children, like you're saying. Yeah. Cause Shoto's the youngest. Yeah. Like all of his, older siblings were the failed experiments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like the coercion that was part of their quote unquote relationship as a married couple, like the layers of grossness and terribleness just get worse every time you rewatch and reread. Mm-hmm. It's just, ugh, I hate oh, him so oh, yeah. much. Absolutely. And this scene just breaks my heart even more every time. Every mm-hmm. single time. Yep. Does not get easier. But then you also have Kazuki eavesdropping in the background. <laughs> and his expression is like, bro, what the fuck? 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 What am I hearing? Like, bitch, you shouldn't have been eavesdropping then. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Baby boy, you really do not need to know everything. <laughs> he oh, has so much regrets. <laughs> Oh, so many regrets. Oh, all I can imagine is just like the TikTok sound. The, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was his face. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that was completely unnecessary. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was beautiful. It broke the No, tension. it was completely it was necessary. I love it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah. That's happening. And then Shoto declares that he'll defeat Izuku using only his ice, which is like, he imagines this as some kind of roundabout fuck you to his dad. And at first Izuku doesn't know what to say, which fair, because Shoto just like trauma dumped all over him. Mm -hmm. But then like he gets his thoughts together and he tells Shoto that although they have different motivations, Izuku isn't any lesser than Shoto and he's not going to back down either. So he's going to keep doing his best to be the number one hero too. Yeah. 
Definitely. And also I love how meta Horikoshi is in this moment. And he does it like very purposefully, I think, mm-hmm. with Izuku's comparisons to his worlds and to like comic books in general. Since comic yeah. books are known in this world, like the, just how he can make it meta, but make it like meaningful, like from mm-hmm. a storytelling perfection. Mm-hmm. Wonderful awesome yeah I'm jealous because a lot of people do meta and then they don't do anything with it yeah so it just kind of leaves yeah. you empty yep also this is like a direct correlation to how Horikoshi called himself out on Shoto having more of an a stereotypical main character backstory than Izuku does mm-hmm. he just kind of brought mm-hmm. it full circle it's Absolutely. beautiful and I hate him for it how dare he be so talented <laughs> <laughs> And then the tier leader thing, I'm just going to skate right past, except to say, Jiro, I take it back. You can smack Danky all you want. Uh, Maria, take it away with Trash Netta's eternal trash can demise. <laughs> yes, yes. I do want to interject that I feel bad about Danky because he is so easily influenced. Uh, if he gets himself away from Mineta, he'll be much better off. But also, he does need to be punished for his perviness because we have to take responsibility. But also, in the dub, like President Mike calls it fan service. Like what, uh, what, what, why, what, it, what even is happening here? Uh-huh. I forget that like straight boys watch this. Yeah. How dare. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never have, but <clears throat> I have been waiting for this one. Yes. On today's episode of Trash Nada's Demise, I have prepared a lovely premium trash can. One that locks from the outside with multiple locks so pesky little critters can't get in, I mean, out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Lock him in there forever. So then we move on from the altercation between Shoto and Izuku. And we learn that the last round of competition will be one-on-one battles. But before they can determine who's fighting who, Ojiro withdraws. And he reveals that Shinso's quirk erased his memory of the event. So he feels like he didn't get to compete on his terms, Um, or at least that's how he framed it. But like, you know, in the show, like he's very clearly disturbed and upset by what happened. And he's like struggling to like comprehend it, which is more than fair. But yeah, that extremely upset him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's like being very noble about it, but also like it is very obvious that it's a personal struggle for him rather Mm -hmm. than it being any sort of performative gesture. Like he's like, I don't know what just happened, but I cannot move forward because of it. So yes. Yes. Ojiro is the sweetest and he deserves the world and he deserves more screen time. I said it. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So then a kid from class one B, I think his name is Shoda. Also withdraws mm-hmm. for the same reason. Um, so two people from Tetsu Tetsu, Tetsu Tetsu's team get to move up to the last round of competition. So that's Tetsu Tetsu, Tetsu Tetsu himself, and then our favorite Catholic, Catholic gal, Ibarra. Yep, yep. And also they moved up because Kendo and her team also withdrew. And just like all these children are so sweet, so nice. Uh, but but also um, Midnight, uh, ma'am. Ma- ma'am honey bunch um you're you're not even hiding the innuendos now so it please just please dial it back oh honey um and also like yuga in that moment is like i will do it for you ojiro like honey no but, oh but yeah sorry. i wanted to comment on that too but then there wasn't space but yeah we saw it <laughs> yeah we saw it it was there he was a goober <laughs> oh yeah and then sweet baby kiri crying probably thinking manly Mm -hmm. oh yeah in the sub he literally goes that's so manly yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh i love him so the lots are drawn and izuku's going first against shinso and shinso tries to start a conversation but ojiro prevents izuku from speaking yes and like this moment there were like so many ships sailing i could not even count them (laughs) um but also also i did want to point out because i freaked out so much the first time Shinso spoke in this season like right now I feel like his actor was told to like calm down down. (laughs) he sounds much more teenagery in this scene so I was like oh thank god he does not sound like a 50 year old smoking man let's okay (laughs) I can believe it now (laughs) yeah 
Also, Okiro is so protective. I cannot. I know. Yes. I can't. Oh, he's such a good friend. So the kiddos who are going on to the next round of, of the competition, you know, they go and get ready. And then the other students still get to compete in like other recreational games. So they mm-hmm. still have stuff to do. Um, and so the kids moving on are prepping and just there's this shot of Katsuki and he's just staring at a wall like his face is right up against a wall and I lose it every time I see that it just made me want to adopt him more like I saw that scene the first time and I went oh boy this shot is not okay like yeah and my reaction is like what why why is he doing that why why sir sir why honey (laughs) I just think he I was just thinking he's broken yeah Yeah, I guess so yeah Uh, the Shoto's trauma dump was too much for him yeah god his entire existence is too much for him right now yeah (laughs) pretty much too much for him all the time just constantly not having a good time right now but yeah so toshi goes and finds izuku and they kind of discuss one for all and how izuku still can't use it very well and then toshi gives izuku some questionable advice which is just like try your best and smile through it and like it helps Izuku in the moment, I guess, but that definitely comes back to bite them both later. Uh, also, like it does bite them, like in the butt, but also like Toshi, stop, no slapping, no stop with the hitting, no, sir. Um, also, like whatever he is saying, it's also even more questionable in the dub because Toshi, Toshi actually says, "I'm counting on you." Like, so Izuku has this whole other pressure coming in, not just his own future, but he's like carrying All Might's future. Like, nah, nah, so much is happening. So then Izuku and Shinso's battle starts and Shinso immediately starts talking crap and he insults Ojiro so that Izuku will get mad enough to respond, which he does. And as soon as he responds, Izuku freezes, his eyes go blank and Shinso ominously states, I win. And then the episode ends on a cliffhanger once again. (laughs) (laughs) Just like you hate. Also, we will be addressing what Shinso calls Ojiro, um, the name he uses, in a bonus episode that we'll release next week. Uh, It's a pretty serious topic, and we wanted to give it full weight and consideration, so we'll be discussing that separately. Yes. Yes. All All right. right. Well, that's it for the time. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We're, We're just so focused on what we are going to be discussing anyway it's good so we're going to move along now to the discussion topics and first first on the list is motherfucking endeavor this, <laughs> this this just fucking eugenicist abusive coercive bastard send him to jail no redemption i don't care if he is trying now in like the current arc or wherever he is like no jail prison forever but also His children's reactions to his attempts are all valid because it is their life, not ours. I just personally would punch him in the face were I to ever see him. I'm taking a big breath for this. (laughs) (laughs) I was angry typing this the entire time. Mm, And at one point, all I could hear was going. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, the angry clacking. Okay, let's go. I have and will always hate this motherfucker. He put his kid through fucking hell and doesn't even acknowledge him as his fucking child, more of his creation. He Mm -hmm. fucked his family over so much that Shoto doesn't even know how to trust others. Shoto has to continuously prove that he is not like his father and doesn't know how to trust others. This asshat is the reason his family has so many issues in the first place, but all he cares about is winning at the expense of all of them. He does not deserve a redemption arc. I don't care what anyone says. He is the epitome of an abusive asshole. Yes. Mm. Beautiful. Both of you. That was wonderful. God, we hate him so much. Yeah. Also, like, I can already hear people being like, well, you want, you know, this character and this character to have a redemption arc and they like literally murder people. So like, why don't you want endeavor to have a redemption arc and that's a big ass question with a really 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 long answer Mm -hmm. and at some point i'd like to do a bonus episode on like villain hierarchies and the difference the the differences between like spinner or toga or honestly even shiggy if you look at him from certain angles Mm -hmm. and then characters like 
all for one endeavor, like how villainy intersects with privilege, um, the ways forgivability and unforgivability differ in real life versus fiction, how that intersects with the realism of the crime caused. Like there's just a lot to break down there. And yeah. one day we're going to do okay. it. Yeah. Not yeah. today. No, no, we don't have time, but yes, yes. we don't have time. And also we don't have to qualify our endeavor hatred. So meh. yeah, that too, that too. <laughs> he's a fictional character and we don't like him and he's not real. So get yep. off your high horse. Yep. Yep. All of that. <laughs> All right. Our point has been made. Next discussion point. Uh, poor Shoto. Uh, he's like always <sighs> stuck between feeling like he's only good for what he's made to be versus wanting to stick it to his dad and forge his own path. Like he's mm. just stuck. And ugh, this poor child, the, his arc yeah. needs to happen. Oh, Yeah, so Shoto is constantly trying to battle with these two sides of himself, which honestly now makes sense because there he has two powers. And I just realized this while I was reading this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I don't blame him. He has no. been told continuously his entire life that he has to be the best. He has to use his powers to be stronger than anyone else. And he wants to be strong, but he wants to do it on his own terms. And as of now, he has not had the proper time to figure out what that means to him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, his, his internal struggle really embodies like the main point of this series, I think. Yeah, definitely. And like the entire struggle of having to like deal with and live with like your abuser's traits because your mm -hmm. abuser is related to you. Like, mm -hmm. ugh. It, yeah, it is a whole journey and he will do so good. But, oh, this poor child. He struggles so mm. much. Struggle. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. All right. And now just for like a quick, um, like nice little turn to get us out <laughs> of this terrible mucky feeling because Endeavor will suck, but we still need to be cheerful about it. Um, Katsuki is a chronic eavesdropper. <laughs> it is. Oh <laughs> like, my God. Like he has eavesdropped several times before and he will eavesdrop several times after. Like that's one uh -huh. of his hobbies. He's <laughs> such a gossip. And like he he, he doesn't even tell anybody though. Like he Right. Who does he confide in? Who does he confide to? Nobody. He just nope. hoards he's, secrets like a little dragon. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a chismosa. Yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. He just like hoards other people's trauma along with his own. Like, honey, please mm -hmm. go to therapy. But also <laughs> <laughs> like he just wanted to make sure that Icy Hot wasn't making a move on his broccoli boyfriend, but instead he just gets backstage passes to the trauma dump of the century. Honey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. honey. Oh my God. <laughs> the gossip is not worth it. Go, go, t go take a nap. That's going to be the episode title. That's good. <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> backstage passes to the trauma dump of the century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. Love it. Love no, it. that's perfect. It's perfect. Yes. Yeah, I had a lot of disorganized thoughts that I still haven't straightened out about like the differences between Shoto and Izuku, like positive versus negative motivation and how that affects like your brain, you stress, distress, uh, but they're not coming together coherently, but they're there. So someone write in and uh, can you uh, tie that all up for me, please? And thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I did not have the t the nice little bow for you. Uh, just that humans are how complicated. Dare uh, how dare I? <laughs> Excuse me. I just came up with the title of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you not be able to read my mind? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also like humans are complicated and we're all unique and I do not have the medical background to say more. But also I feel like if adults would stop stressing out and abusing their own children, we wouldn't need to figure out our own feelings because they would just be more obvious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of went a little bit off the deep end on this too. <laughs> yes. Fuck yes. Yeah. Um, so both kids, both children have had their share of traumatic experiences. Sure, mm. some of them are worse than others. Um, so Shota but it's also really hard to rate oh, yeah. traumatic experiences too. Yes. It, it's yes. not easy rating them. Like nobody's traumatic experiences as invalid as someone else's. But um, Shoto is motivated by not wanting to be like his father, whereas Izuku is motivated by wanting to meet 
the other the expectations of the people who have helped him Mm -hmm. um they're both trying to surpass their limits that's a little black clover coat for you guys Um, (laughs) and shoto has a more negative motivation whereas izuku has a more positive motive motivation at the end of the day they both have similar outcomes but it's also very different on how they should reach the same outcome Mm -hmm. beautiful yeah yeah. Also, lots of thoughts about main character tropes versus secondary character tropes and how some characteristics are given more attention and priority, but they're not better than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my time has cometh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the best main character tropes is tragic backstory. Um, this mm-hmm. is very obvious with Shoto. He also has the personality of the tragic MC, which is brooding with internal struggles. Whew. Uh, <laughs> this is also one of the few times where Izuku actually also has a characteristic MC trope, the I, the I will succeed because of my friends trope. Um, but he also does display a lot of secondary character tropes as well, like the supportive friend who wants everybody to be happy. Um, Horikoshi made Izuku complex. And honestly, that's what I love about his writing as much as Mm -hmm. I hate Horikoshi making me feel things that I don't want to feel. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Oh, he's so good. But also we did not ask him to be so good and therefore hurt us uh, with... Mm -hmm. No, it's it's oh, so complicated. Anyway, moving <laughs> along to Ojiro and the one B student showed up withdrawing. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that everyone was so shocked, um, which led me to believe that this isn't something that happens in the sports festival very often. And a couple of the students tried to talk Ojiro out of it. So again, like this generation already places a much higher value on honesty and like personal responsibility. Sometimes a little too much, but you know, we'll get to that. <laughs> I I would argue that it's not too much and I truly appreciate their big old fuck yous to their capitalistic system and industry but we don't have the space for all of that today. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, I meant like in this moment it's not too much but then like in later arcs certain characters are going to take the personal responsibility part like way too far and end up hurting themselves. How dare you bring that up right now? <laughs> How dare you? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Horikoshi. He's the one threading all of this crap together. Yes, yes, we know that. And he's he has his own permanent spot in the corner. But you now go to the corner too. <laughs> Young man, go to the dunce box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Too that many feelings. Was an over the garden wall reference for y'all. I still have not seen that, so I did not get it. It's fine. That it's a great continues, show. That continues to break my heart. I know. It's like, I want to watch it, but also I never think to find it to watch it. So maybe I will add it to my ADHD board jar. Anyway. Yes. Ooh, when you come down in June, we can watch it together. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and like my like contribution to the discussion topics, uh, it was like, it's actually back to the opening credits. And I just think that it's very interesting that Katsuki's opening credit stretches are in a ruined place as a setting. Whereas all the other characters that we see in the opening credits are training in like much nicer places. And I thought it was symbolic of his world literally being broken down in the past two seasons and in the future arcs. So it's going to be rebuilt. Or I may have been reading too much into it. What? what? Nope. <laughs> not reading too much into it. I think that's great. I love that a lot. Katsuki, it's time to rebuild your entire self-concept, you little fucker. Let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I took an entire different route and I was like, it just might be his tendency to be a little destructive. We, we <laughs> have both. Both are perfect. Let, yes, that is a great both. point to add. Both is good. <laughs> yes, both, both is good. I love that. <laughs> All right. And then like my last discussion point is also going to kind of lead into the Easter egg section because it's about a character we haven't met yet, but we will be meeting her very soon. Hopefully. Yay! I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's for a while, but yeah, it does, yes. I'm going anyway. to melt into a puddle. <laughs> yep. Yep. We will. I-, I just need to know if Nana, and if you don't know who Nana is yet, I don't, don't know worry why about you're- it. 
how how are you how did you even find us if you don't know who Nana is? Anyway, <laughs> did she also like use the weird percentage metaphor that Toshi uses in the training? Like what even oh God, what, so. what what the, the numbers? I don't understand. It's a human body. It does, it's not percent uh, anyway. <laughs> I sure hope she does. In my head, she is such a geek. Such yeah. a little nerd. Yeah. A little dork. I love her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I could see it, but also I need confirmation. So like mm-hmm. what, what is even happening there? Anyway, to move along into the actual section of Easter eggs and manga differences, um, <laughs> I just kind of listed them. I did no formatting at all. So we're going to go on an adventure as I read them. Um, chapter 31 does actually open with a pretty obvious hint about Toya when you read it with all the knowledge. So I was like, I was pretty surprised. It's like seated all the way back there. So that's. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. I was like, oh, hello. Oh, I I know what that means. Thank you, Horikoshi, (laughs) for the pain. (sighs) As usual. Yeah, yeah. (gasps) All right. Next, they did actually increase Midnight's, like, inappropriateness in the dub, like, for whatever reason. I don't know what that reason could have been, and I don't appreciate it, whatever it was. Um, also like when they're doing like the little side games running around and Mineta has like the card that he's asking the audience for in the, and mm-hmm. in the manga, the card says lard, which is like a normal thing to ask for in weird game shows, I guess, maybe, I don't know, but they changed it to back fat in the dub and someone better have been fired for. Wow. Yeah. It's not it great. Also in the sub actually. Yeah. Like, what, was what? it? I did not yeah. notice. Good. I mean, it's terrible. What? Why? Why would they do that? Why? Fire! Fire! Yeah. All of them. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, like, also in that little like game show moment, uh, Kendo and Monoma's interaction was also anime only, and I like that they added it. Oh yeah, that one was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Why? Why the back fat though? Yeah. Anyway, <sighs> the, my very last like point about the differences and the easter eggs because there's not like really any big easter egg moments in this one is that when toshi kind of says show some bravado even if it's fake when he's like advising izuku like this is kind of close to like the setting an appropriate mindset theme that had been being developed but also like toshi honey n- no please <laughs> please take some teaching lessons please take some appropriate psychology lessons like honey please yeah. So much is happening. All right. And like I said, there's no big Easter eggs, but next episode, I'm so excited about the specters. Well, I have quite a bit to say. Oh. All right. And that's all we got for this particular episode. Final comments. Anyone, anyone. A uh, final reminder that we'll be addressing the Shinso thing in a bonus app coming out next week. So look for that. Yes. And endeavor hate to unite us all. Amen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fuck him to the ends of the earth. All right. This has been My Hero Analysis. You'll hear us again soon. And in the meantime, go beyond plus ultra and thirst responsibly. Bye, y'all. Thanks again for listening. Theme music is The Happy Cowboy by Gary the Canary, remixed by Fern. If you'd like to submit questions, fan art, or bonus episode topics, visit our website at myheroanalysis.com. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok under at myheroanalysis. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Bye, y'all.